Hello, I'm Grace Vandenberg. Today's conversation is coming just in the nick of time. Another new year is upon us, and literally right around the corner. Skip the New Year's resolutions of cutting out chocolate and drinking less soda and not having a cheeseburger until your birthday. What a snooze. This year, make it the year you start learning how to turn your life around and improving where you can. And that, to be honest, is most things. Hardly anything in this world is unchangeable. We just need to realize it. Life in general can be challenging if, if we don't come from a loving, supporting family to set the foundation from the early age of who we can become, the belief in the system of evolving and instilling strength and bravery, and in a direct and indirect way again, formatting our self-confidence. The world around us, from personal through to business and work, can become non-existent. We can become unfulfilled. And what happens when we become unfulfilled? We lead an unsatisfied life. Along that course of existence, we can develop all the wrong and negative traits, accumulative, that will not serve us well. And in worst case scenario, aside of the woven bitterness and resentment that can derive from these failings, many people end up in the wrong side of the law. This we do not want. This will also not serve us well. Put it this way. When we put all our heart and soul into something, drain ourselves with effort, and keep picking ourselves up after the knockdowns and the struggles to get into that job, start that business, or simply climb to the next level, there is such a derived sense of purpose we get as a consequence. That in turn develops our self-confidence. Say you take a yoga class for the first time. You're nervous, uncomfortable, because you never participated before and you know you won't be as flexible as the instructor. But you don't throw in the towel. You do that hour-long class, and it hurts and you'll ache, and you're hot and you're sweaty. But you acquire that feel-good euphoria that comes from the release of all those happy and good-for-you hormones. The next day you ache some more, but you definitely notice an extra spring to your step. That particular back pain is no longer there or hurts less, giving you the incentive to go back for more. Six months down the line, you're taking an intermediate class. A year from your first class, perhaps you're advanced. This is the mere reflection of trying and trying again until you reap the rewards, meaning... If you had thrown in the towel and never went back, you'd be missing out on some more self-discovery. It's the opening of a door, peeking through and learning the tools and mechanisms as to how to do something. And you apply those tools, and you keep applying those tools, until you master your skill and goal. This all builds a natural confidence. Hence why so many CEOs and entrepreneurs get wrongfully labelled cocky or even up their own behind. They've stuck to what they know and with the times learned ways to evolve to remain in the particular game. They know how to do what it is they do in their sleep. It's called experience. Experience breeds confidence and is a direct result of ability obtained. They know instantaneously when someone is doing their, isn't doing their job to perfection and some subordinates don't like having their noses knocked out of joint. And they label their boss cocky. This is an immature mindset. When someone, anyone, does something long enough, they become a master at it. Instead of being negative and associating a negative connotation to something, turn that on his head and hardwire your brain to see the positive in it. The saying, for every negative there's a positive, it's so true. Even in the toughest lessons life throws at you, there is something in that lesson life felt you needed to learn. 
if things like landing your dream job, creating your dream business is too easy, there's not the same value of appreciation derivative from the fruits of your labour. Everyone should view a bad situation like being out of work, being low on cash, struggling to pay rent, buy food as a presented opportunity. In desperate times, we think broader like a fisherman casting his daily catch. A narrow mindset never serves anyone. If anything, is closing your doors of opportunity on yourself. Not smart, right? I can honestly attest that I am so much better now, so much wiser now that I'm 13 years into the game. And I can't wait to be in it 20, 30, 40 years because writing is my dream job. I will never retire. It completes me, makes me happy. It can't succeed and go from strength to strength unless I give it my all. Side note. If you don't give something your all in this life, you'll never know satisfaction, happiness opposed to mere contentment, the acceptance of less to attain that contentment. Never accept less for yourself. In my opinion, that's abuse, self-harm. This is why I believe and embrace one key major factor, to which I am truly grateful to, and as a woman to perhaps another woman in this modern world of extreme and constant access to anti-aging and procedures, our best friend is indeed age. With age automatically comes confidence. Age is a huge and unbeatable asset. Bottom line, there's such a comfort in knowing you're not a newbie. You have a track record. As a society, we women are indoctrinated to fear, if you will, the words menopause, prime, 40, 50, grandma. But as I'm getting older, and although I'm not at menopause yet or 40, because I'm 38, those are the things that are right around the corner for me and I'm thinking about and prepping for more and more in this phase of my life. Hence why I see those associated words through a new lens. They're not words to be feared, but embraced and respected, even enjoyed. If you're a woman or a man in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and you take a moment to reflect to when you were in your teens or 20s, chances are you're a lot more daring and brazing today. You know your own mind, are comfortable in your own skin. These are the gifts of age, gifts that we can take into a new career. When we're comfortable in our own skin, we become more motivated in our quests. We need to focus our energy on something. With age, one should not, year by year, feel insecure. We might not look the same, might not even recognize the person looking back at us when we look in the mirror. For instance, if a spouse or a partner leaves you for no longer looking the same as you did 20, 30 years ago, this is no reason to feel broken hearted. What did she say? Has this woman gone mad? This spouse or partner was my entire world. That's my point. You need to be your entire world first and then incorporate others into this world, not make them your atmosphere, your oxygen. Do you remember falling in love as a teen or a young woman in your 20s? And you believe, truly believe that you can't, won't survive life if you lost that person? Remember that kind of hard love and equally hard loss? This is something that needs to be left behind in those younger years, or at least bring that same level of devotion to yourself. And use that to continually top up your ambition and drive, steps to take in obtaining that dream job. What do you love, love doing I mean? Remember, this is all about you. What are you good at? What comes naturally to you? Make a list. 
clarify what it is you really want moving forward. And what are your assets? What can you give better than someone else? For instance, <clears throat> say you're in the field of marketing, PR, media, and you're British, but you want to get into the realm of the United States. Both are very different cultures. The mindsets are drastically different. What might be acceptable in the workforce in the U.S. might not be acceptable within the workforce in the U.K. Chances are you'll be out of your depths, at least until you start learning the difference, the medium balance. Chances are you need to spend time there to be around the people to figure out how you can speak to them. Chances are you'll need a PR team, a machine or manager, agent who knows the ropes from whom you can learn and who you can navigate and direct you in your infancy. Where I see many business and bosses fail today is by a lack of respect, disrespect towards his premises and conditions, not keeping everything up to health and safety standards, disrespect towards employees. Rather than motivating their employees, they're used as a second-rate mule without feelings or brains. Disrespect towards human and employment rights. Safety at work. I call this disrespect because if one loves what they do, they'll get to the best they can afford to present their business in the most respectful and professional light possible. If employees are disrespected, you can bet your bottom dollar those bosses do not respect or value customers either. Hence, the great invention of online customer refuse. In recent times, this has helped to some degree to force the hand of bosses to get their act together, but not all. But no business can cheat the digital world. What I hate to see is a business having great employees who deliver and provide first-rate services, while behind the scenes those employees are abused and their human rights obliterated. This happens more than one might even consider. The more business gets away with it, the more it happens. People will complain, but not always to the right authorities. What greedy bosses don't consider is, if their business premises are poor, and their price is high, this is a reflection of their values, or rather lack of. As humans, we are generally hardwired to avoid these kinds of people and places. Consequently, this is not healthy for a business, business revenues, or employees' turnover. My point being. Bosses who respect their businesses and have a long haul forecast for business success should not employ young, cheap staff who are not interested in the end game, who are not invested in the end game, and who are not invested in that business. But only there is to get a weekly wage during spring break or a couple of months before leaving for college. They're not invested in any part of your business model. You are developing long-term relationships. A business can only succeed based on the quality of employees who are doing the work. If you pay cheap, you cannot expect first-class results. Most crucial, networking is everything. Keep in touch with those who have worked with with you prior, who can attest to your skill set, loyalty to a company, and overall results and work ethic. Keep positive familiarity. End game. Be the employee you would want to hire if you were the boss. Set out each and every day to show up to work with the objective of impressing your superiors. Even as an author, do not think that you won't have a network of professionals you will need around you. For instance, an editor, agent. Publisher, potentially multiple publishers in different countries, potentially multiple agents in different countries, translators, 
audio recorders for audiobooks, graphic designers for book covers, PR and publicist companies, movie producers for book trailers, movie producers, directors for development teams if you're if you had a big, shall I say. And maybe one day an assistant who'll work with you in your office. All before you hit the radio and television interviews. For each and every one of these people you work with, or for needed to treat people with dignity and respect in order to acquire dignity and respect. How you treat others will be what you are judged, known and remembered for. What you don't want is to end up famous either nationally or internationally and have the people you mistreated sell stories on you. Remember, the past will always come back to haunt you when you're on top. As negative things, things that are out of your control, occur on your journey to the top, be transparent, honest, take accountability, above all, be humble. There's always a market for a good work experience. Tips. Read up on a daily basis and keep up on relevant changes within your industry. For an author, that would include what the hottest genre and topic will be in the commercial market next season. If you're an influencer or trying to become one, learn what is relevant in the category that best suits you like the latest release of a new lipstick, set or eyeshadow palette. Get to know the dates of release, even if that means putting in a pre-order and paying full price for it. It'll pay off in the end. Don't be late to the party waiting for a product to come down. By then, most people on the internet and in magazines will have heard of it and your potential mark material isn't anything new, therefore rendered redundant. Every relationship must be approached carefully, respectfully, honestly, and strategically. That includes the relationship you have with your audience on social media and every other platform. There's power in contact. Without the masses, there's no revenue. So be that boss in your life, from your private life to work life. And all the times, conduct yourself professionally. Everyone we come into contact with is a potential fan in the making, consumer, friend, network contact. Menopause, old, aging, has been, wrinkles, over the hill, are words I don't like, respect or see any benefit from using within the social standard. Equally, I don't like the word retirement. Unless you want to retire, of course. But I don't understand the want to. After 65 or whatever the retirement age is in your country, there's still so much life to be had and savoured, like French Burgundy. (sighs) Just because you're 50 or 60 or retired doesn't mean you can't have a reason to get up every day and look forward to doing something, a new adventure perhaps. What are you talking about, you might ask? No one is going to hire a person of retirement age. Others might even say, for every other older person in employment, is taking away an opportunity for a younger, more worthy candidate. I've heard this so many times throughout the years. You're retired. You've been used to being around people for decades. Used to being out and about, ran off your feet, keeping your mind active as well as your body. But the job itself, you didn't necessarily like. Perhaps it was outdoors and it was cold and dirty. Or an office job that was too high pressure with too little reward and compensation. But you did it because you had to. If you were tired now, now is your opportunity to reevaluate your position and start a home business, a YouTube channel, radio channel, write books, become an illustrator and sell your work. Start an online training facility into something you've worked in and excelled in. Giving you both interaction with others, eliminating that unfamiliar isolation and giving you extra income. In turn, that extra sense of fulfillment. 
This is a conversation that could go on and on. There are so many avenues that people just don't even consider. This week, I hope I've given you enough food for thought to provoke the juices of potential and anew to seep. I'll pick this up from where I've left off next week and discuss more potential ideas to help you compete in a highly pressured and highly competitive workforce. Remember, nothing worth having should come easy. Stop selling yourself short and fight against the currents of chance and possibility for your just deserves. Step into your 2023, a new person, on a new adventure. Until next time, I'm Grace Vandenberg.